But before that, uh, let me just uh, drink a bit of tea here. And then I will have to see how we continue. Well, we'll see about that. Hey everyone, it's time for my monthly video playing a game that my patrons have suggested and you as the community have decided on. And this time we will be playing through Final Girl. Um, I got the core box and also the box, the Happy Trails Horror, which um, I have heard and read that this is like the best box to like kind of get to know the game because it's like the most basic and bare bones experience of this game. So um, yeah, so we're playing through that. Final Girl, um, that was actually a concept I was not familiar with because I don't really watch horror movies and I'm not a horror fan. Like the only things that I like regarding horror are like, like rather uh, good thrillers, uh, just like the others, uh, The Ring, The Sixth Sense, things like that. Um, and also everything regarding zombies. I think that is quite interesting as well. But everything else, I'm not a really, I'm not a huge fan of uh, horror, horror games, horror theme. So this is why this game did not really speak to me at the beginning. But um, well, finally I have tried it now because well, a lot of people say it's one of the best board games. So well, best of, one of the best solo board games. So I was happy to be able to finally try that. I will give you my thoughts later on in the game, uh, what I think about it. But first, I think we should just um, play through the game. What I wanted to say is uh, Final Girl is a concept that I was not familiar with. It's like the last protagonist still alive um, as a serial killer is like roaming around and killing everyone off. And like the Final Girl is like uh, doing like the last stand against that killer. That is what we are doing. So we are trying to survive and um, kill the killer before we die. So yeah, um, pretty grim theme, but I mean, it's a horror theme game, so that is fine. All right, so um, as usual, I will just quickly set up the game and I will see you in just a few seconds. And that should be the setup of the game. Just as a small disclaimer, um, you, you, you know that uh, these playthroughs are just what it says, playthroughs, right? These are not teachers or anything, right? So um, I'm hoping that I have all the rules correct. If not, if there are any mistakes, I even put them in the subtitles. If I realize that while editing, if I realize it afterwards, um, the corrections will be, my, will be in my pinned comment. All right, so here we are. Um, we are that pink meeple here at the make out point <laughs> at Camp Happy Trails. We have a lot of so-called victims here, so other people. And down here we have the killer. Uh, the killer's goal is it at the end, of course, to, um, to just um, defeat us, right? We have five health, as you can see here. That um, cardboard heart here at the top um, counts for that as well. I will show you later why that is a different kind of heart. Um, then the killer has 12 health, including that cardboard heart here. We have a little card here. Um, we can like um, victims that we save, we can cover like these um, these spaces with, and then we get that bonus. If we have all six covered, we can turn it around, turn the card over for like a special ability that we then have. Um, also what we have is like the horror meter here um, that will just change depending on whatever happens. Things can um, actually change that um, and that uh, tells us how many dice we can roll. At the moment there's two dice. Um, if we are in the green area, which is quite hard to get, but then we can roll three dice, otherwise only one. And one die is just not enough to really do a whole lot of things. Um, that's like the horror meter. Then we also have like the blood loss meter here that um, tells us when um, when the villain will activate his dark power, get stronger, and also how much damage he does and how far he can walk. And um, then that's the map here. On the map, there are different symbols. So there are symbols where we can search. Um, there is a there are, there are two places here, a uh, three even where we can like um, escort. Um, the victims um, from the map, so to speak, and then we can cover these spots here. Um, that is a good thing to do. But on the other hand, the killer will also focus like on victims. So these also serve as kind of like a protection for us, right? 
Then we have all these cards here. Um, this is like pretty much a hand management game. This is, this is our starting hand here, and we can play cards to do stuff. And then in the planning phase, after the action phase, like after we have played cards, we can get new cards. Um, we have like some so-called action points, and I would call them action points. This is like measured in time here. You see like this um, sand timer here is placed on the six. So we have six times, so to speak, to do stuff that is, um, playing cards, but also getting new cards. Um, and then we also have like a few things up here. This was our setup cards. Here we have items at the cabins, dock, and the utility shed. We can get different items. And also we have like a terror deck that um, where like things happen, like bad things usually. And we also have an event deck here. Um, and it's just a few tokens here and there, our dice. Um, this event deck actually at the beginning, we will turn one over and do what it says. It says one less victim will will follow you. That is very bad because when we enter a victim space and then leave it again, we can take up to two victims with us. Um, and now it's only one victim that will follow us. That is actually pretty bad to be honest because we want to save victims for sure because we need like these uh, little bonuses here. But um, okay, that's the way it is. So um, this is just the uh, quick rundown. Um, the game, we win the game if we defeat the killer, we lose the game if we are killed. It's as simple as that. There actually also is the option that both happens at the same time, that we like kill each other at the same time. That is still a win for us because we like, it was like that heroic feat of us to uh, sacrifice ourselves to um, get rid of the killer, right? So, yeah. That's kind of how that works. Okay, um, and that is pretty much like everything you need to know at the start to kind of know what we are doing here today. Um, so I will now um, start playing. So um, we have different phases here that is also noted here on our final girl board. Um, so first I'm Laurie, which is the final girl I've chosen for today. Um, we can play uh, we can play like action cards with her. And you see here, like the weak attack, for example, it, tells us like um, how many successes, like what happens when we get a success here. Um, so the weak attack, for example, doesn't take any time. Um, it would say like here, for example, right? Here we would actually gain time, he would, he, we would lose time. And if we have like two successes here, then we do one damage. Um, if we have only one success, then we do one damage and we lose a health. And if we, um, if we have no success at all, then we lose health and also and our action phase. We can't actually do anything anymore then. So that is like kind of how that system works. We just take as many dice as the horror meter here allows us to take. At the moment, that's two. So I would just roll two dice and then do whatever it says. Um, the five and the sixes here have a star. This means these are successes. The threes and the fours, uh, where is the four? Over there. And um, these have like two cards pictured. If we discard two of our action cards, this counts as a success, otherwise a failure. And one and two do nothing, right? That's a failure. Um, that's pretty much how that works. Um, and then at any time we can say, okay, the action phase is over, we will just leave it. Um, either if we have no time left or if we... Uh, or if we just don't want to play anymore because after that is the planning phase and we also need time for that. Um, all cards we play will then go to the discard pile. Uh, like we'll go to this large pile here, to the market, so to speak, um, for later use. Okay, so we have a weak attack. We can only do that on the killer space, so not interesting at the moment. We can do have a short rest, so we can just heal up a little bit. Also, we can like manipulate the horror meter um, um, to our favor, but um, that is not necessary either because we have five starting health and that is also our max health. We cannot go over that. Um, and then we have focus. With focus, we could, if we are lucky, get a little bit more time. Um, and also we um, could manipulate the horror meter. Um, exactly. Oh, by the way, this, yeah, this was not to our favor, that it was actually be against us, right? Like is that, if that mask has a line through it, that means we can put it in, pull it in our favor to the left. So focus is pretty good, actually. Um, we might use one of those because we need to stock up on some really good cards. Then we can walk. Um, that is pretty self-explanatory. We can just walk and that is it. We also have some other things here. Um, we have like the blue ones are reaction cards, right? These are like, if we like are damaged, then we can like retaliate or guard or whatever. These are 
cards we can play when it's the killer's turn and also we have like things like sprint which is like a fast walk of course we can surge and do a few other things here so yeah that is pretty much all um, we have so uh, what is our plan well of course we will have to kill the killer at some point i do see an aluminum aluminum bat here so that means that um, we could actually do more damage which is pretty good um, so we can like hold up to two items in our hands depending on how many hands icons they have so the aluminum bat is like a two-handed weapon so we can only have that bat in our hand but we can have everything else in our backpack and items like the fireworks without a hand icon they will just put, be put in the backpack and can be used at any time all items in the backpack with at least one hand icon first need to be equipped in order to be uh, to be used right so yeah Okay, so um, action phase, what we will do? Well, I will. I would like to get that aluminum bat, so we need to search. We can't do it this round yet because the search card is still there. We don't have it in our hand, right? So um, I think what I will do is just start saving a few people, uh, a few <laughs> victims, I mean, and that we can do with the walk action, right? So here we can move up to one space and then up to one space again. That is enough. We just need one success each. Um, well, actually, no, like two seconds would be even better because then we could just start like start saving a few of the of the victims. I think that is a good thing to do. Um, there is actually an item somewhere. We need to find it. I don't know if it's in the cabin stock or in the utility shed, but there is an item that is really good. There's like the keys for the boat. Then we can have like the boat here. Uh, do I have it here? Uh, some place is the boat here we go then we could like put the boat here and then we can just really like quickly traverse the lake and go from place to place so that one is really helpful i had that in my last game when i actually won I actually won with one hp left with one heart left that was really close but i only did that because of the boat icon so okay enough talk let's just play our walk card here and um, we will take two dice as indicated here and we will roll them and hope for at least one success, maybe even two successes. We have one success, that is fine. With that, we cannot do anything. Um, had that been like this card thing, then we could have discarded cards, but one success, that is fine. So now we do what it says here. Move up to one space, I will do that. Uh, I will actually move, oh, actually I'm here. I need to move all the way around here to get to the victim. So let me just move over there. I thought I could go here, but there's no connection here. So um, I will move over there and then also we lose one time. That's it. And then um, I will do that again. Let me walk again. So again, roll two dice. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually do want to walk, uh, but how many spaces? Like two would be great, but then I would have to, like, you know what? I don't need the weak attack for now. I will not attack the killer at the moment. The killer will not be able to get to my spot right now. So weak attack is gonna be, I can I can actually discard that. I can also discard the short rest. So I will discard two cards in order to have one success. Um, that means here the, the one success means we can move up to one space and lose one time. So now we walked a little bit, that is fine. Um, and then let me see, I want to get to the cabins later on over here to actually search for the aluminum bat. We could now focus to get, um, to receive a little bit more time and also manipulate that track a little bit. That might be okay. So we have four time left. I do want the search card, um, maybe the sprint card, so we can actually like go a little, go a little bit faster. That would be four time we need to buy those. You see like the cost in the lower right corner, these um, with the yellow hourglass, these starting cards, they cost nothing. So we can take them for free to our hand um, next time. So um, I am not 100% sure. So search and sprint. Do we need more time to get more stuff? I think that is fine for now. I think I will rather keep my focus cards when we actually need them. Distraction is pretty nice, but I think that's good if we do it later. So I think I'm actually fine for now. So, um, and now after the action phase, we have the planning phase. What we do during the planning phase is we will um, purchase action cards, right? Um, so um, we still have four time um, left over. I actually want the search card and the sprint card. They cost both two each. 
So we will be down to zero and now we can't do anything anymore. And what we do now is now we, uh, at, at the end of the planning phase, we just reset the timer back to six and all cards that we have discarded and played this turn, we will um, put them into their respective piles again. Um, I have like one one spot here reserved for just these zero cards. I will not split them. I will not split them into different um, in, into different piles. I will just put them here so we know these are free, and then I can just browse through them next time and see what I want next time. So you see, it takes like two turns for you to be able to use a card that you just used. That is important to know, right? So I just used um, these cards. And next turn, I can get them back in the planning phase after the action phase. And then the turn after that, I can use them in the action phase. That is important to know, right? So I will not be able to use them next round again, right? That is very important to know. Okay, so that was the planning phase. And now we have the killer phase. And we have two phases, um, or like two steps in the, um, in the killer phase. First, we resolve the killer action. Um, that is the, here we have like the finale card at the top that will be revealed whenever we run out of terror cards. There are 10 in the deck. So um, yeah, in like 10 rounds, I think. Uh, well, or 10, 11, depending on how we count, then we will re reveal that. But until then, you see like there's an action there. Um, it is quite small, but it says that um, uh, who we will target. We will target the final girl or the victim, depending on who's closer, and we will do a kill action, right? We will... Um, that knife means kill and the other action we can do is like if there's like a shoe like this here which means that the um, killer can walk um, so but the killer will not walk before we'll just um, attack and there's no one in the space of the killer so nothing can be done so nothing happens actually right there's nobody to be killed and then we reveal um, a card from the terror deck and it tells us what uh, we will do then that is Dark Feast here. That means and we increase the horror level by one, which is not good, right? We want to keep that in the white area at least, maybe even in the green if possible. So we will need to do something there. I think we have that focus card. We could work with that. Ah, the distraction would now be good, but, but maybe maybe another round. And then it says here for every victim that is dead, Hans recovers one heart. But there are not dead victims at the moment, so that is fine. The next phase is the panic phase. Um, we will check if um, for two things that need to be both need to be need, need to be the case. First of all, a victim must have died, which is not the case, and also another victim must be on the same space as the killer. And then they panic, and then we just roll dice and stuff, and they just run <laughs> run away from the killer in specific directions. There are like little numbers here between these um, between all of these. Um, spaces here uh, which tell you where the victims will then run but that is not the case and then we have the up case upkeep phase two things first of all we will reveal the finale card if all the terror cards have been played but that is not the case and then we can rearrange items rearranging items mean this is the only time when we can put like stuff from the backpack into our hands and the other way around and that is pretty much it and then we just start a new round so actually, it's pretty straightforward, right? The difficult thing is to actually win. <laughs> this is a very tough game. So I won my last game, um, barely, but only because I had that stupid boat. If I don't have that uh, this round, it will be very, very tough. Okay, so um, I definitely want to go into that direction. I want to save a victim, but I also want to um, do that with the cabin there. Also, before we continue the next round, you might be wondering why haven't I turned over a new event card? Well, event cards are actually triggered by like an event icon, right? We don't turn one over all the time. I would have liked, I would like to turn one over now because I hate that um, that effect that one less victim will follow me. It's horrible. So I would actually like to have an event soon. Okay, so first let's let's use our sprint action here. Um, let's hope for two successes. Moving three spaces would be amazing. Um, that is one success only, okay? So one success means move up to two spaces. So we will go to the victim here and then decrease time by one. So now we cannot search. Um, I could focus now. Might be a good idea because I definitely want to, uh, I definitely want to decrease the horror level again. Um, so yeah. And also how much, what, what do I want to buy? I want to get the distraction card. That is very good. That costs three. And also, I can walk a little bit again. Maybe another sprint card would also be good. So that is like five 
uh, five time I need together. I have five at the moment. With focus, I could get even more. Mm. But we could also like risk it, right? Because if we only have one success, then we actually um, lose one time and then I don't have enough to buy both cards. So I might not focus yet and just hope that we can do all of that next round. So I think I will just end the action phase now. Um, yeah, I will end the action phase, go to the planning phase. I will spend three time to get that distraction thing here. And then I will also spend two time to get the sprint card. Um, and then let's look through the free cards here and see what we want from those. Just be mindful of the fact that we have a hand limit of 10, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five cards at the moment. That's fine. And free cards, we have four. So I will take all of these cards. Yeah, I will take all of them into my hand. Um, I probably will not need the rest in attack cards, but I can always discard them, right? So um, we want to have a lot of cards because we might want to also discard cards for that partial success here, right? Oh, I just see, you can't even see the dice. So like this, should be a little bit better. Um, okay. So yeah, that was our planning phase. We purchased all the action cards we wanted to purchase. So we reset that to six. We discard that one, put that back where it belonged. And then we have the killer phase. So the killer will uh, still try to kill someone here, but there's no one there, so that is fine. And then the next terror card. So now we will start doing that. So, oh, we increase the horror level by two. That is bad. Now we only have one die left. Oh, the I should have. I should have really, really paid attention to that. Okay, poo, can we can we fix that? We might be able to fix that, yeah. With distraction, we can fix it, and also with focus. Okay, um, okay, and then he is walking. If we see here, um, either the final girl or a victim, like whoever is closest, um, he will walk to, um, and. And we see that these are two spaces apart and these as well. There's the same amount of um, victims there. And then we always like uh, check for what would, like the rule of infinite evil it's called. Like what would be the worst outcome for me? The worst outcome for me probably would be the killer going to, going to here because I want to search there. And I also want to, uh, I'm there. So the killer will move two spaces here. Okay, so, so far, um, Nothing has happened, right? Because we first attacked and then we moved. If that would have been the other way around, one of these would now die. But that is not the case yet, but that will happen next round for sure. Okay, so that um, that was the killer phase. Now we have the panic phase. Um, there was no victim killed this turn, so these two don't panic. Just imagine it thematically like the killer is like um, like in that area, but the victims has have not seen the killer yet, right? And that's why they're maybe, maybe there, is it a house? Yeah, there's like a little house. So maybe in the house playing a few games and the killer's just outside and they haven't seen him yet. Okay, then uh, the upkeep phase, uh, nothing pretty much, nothing to rearrange and no finale card. Okay, so now it's our action phase again. So let's see. Uh, we don't want any of these for now. I definitely want to do the, let me do a focus action and hope that we get a success. We only have one die this time. So let's hope we get a success. Yes, we actually have one success there. That is wonderful. So that means one success means we can decrease the horror level by one and we also decrease time by one like this. Oops, wonderful, okay. And then, well, yeah, yeah, I will just put them. Let me just put the play cards right there. Okay, and then um, I want to decrease the horror level even more. Let's do the distraction thing now, because now we have two dice again to roll, right? And let's hope for two successes. Only one success, unfortunately, but we can decrease the horror level by one again. And also we gain one time even, because we've, we are just distracting the uh the killer from very very far away and let me do another focus action maybe with two successes would be great because then we also get a lot of time no we have no success we have a partial one here i will actually um get rid of short rest and weak attack just for to have turn that into a success um that means that uh, we can decrease that again but we also lose one time okay so that was not too bad. 
And well, we don't have a whole lot of time to uh, actually buy cards, right? But I definitely want to save a few of the victims. So oh, do we search first? We could also search first, right? Um, walk and then sprint. There is two time maximum that we need to spend. Um, and then we would have three. Do we have the search action? Yeah, then we would have two left after the search action, if that works. Um, that's not a whole lot to buy stuff, right? But we could just run away after that with the sprint action. Okay, let's try it. Um, I will do the walk action first. Um, I just need one success. I just want to go into the cabins here to search. There is one success, wonderful. So I will go here without the victim for now. Um, and that costs me another time. Then I will search because in the cabins I can search and there is the aluminum, aluminum bat. We only need one success to take the top item. With two successes, we can take like two, um, the top two items and choose one. But I want the bat. We have one success, that's fine. So we can actually take, take the bat. But that means now that this top item, we don't know what it is, right? That one is not uncovered yet. So yeah, we don't know. Okay, so and that costs us one time as well. Let's equip that aluminum bat. Um, so that is really cool because that just gives us one more damage. Also, it has an effect. Whenever you inflict damage to the killer with the aluminum bat, you may immediately discard a minor dark power, um, including any health markers remaining on the card. That is really, really good. Like minor dark powers are powers that can be generated or can be one of the terror cards. And then Hans gets stronger, right? He can like, get more health and stuff like that or more abilities. Um, and being able to discard that is wonderful. So the aluminum bat, really good. Okay, um, and then I do want to do a, did I? Yeah, I decrease everything. And then I want to do a sprint action, I think. With that, we could save the first meeple, like the first, <laughs> I mean, the first victim. We could do that. We could also just walk. Uh, now let me do a sprint. Let me do a sprint and hope for one success at least. No, we don't have a success. We only have a partial one, but we can't discard two cards anymore. So we have no success. We can move up to one space. Um, we lose one health. And um, we lose two time. And our action phase is over. So this is really bad because now we can't do anything anymore. That went really, really bad. So now we have our planning phase. Planning phase means, yeah, well, as you know, we can now purchase cards, but we don't have anything we can purchase. We could we could do this here. We could get the close call um, um, that costs us one. This is just like play any after horror roll to reroll any one die or reroll all dice for two health, uh, for two time. So that is not too bad. We can do that. And then we will reset the timer to six. And I will put all these cards here where they belong. So now we have, we do have a problem. If the killer gets to our space, but yeah, he needs two spaces. I don't know if he will if he will actually walk that far. So these here, then distraction and focus is there. Okay, good. So now it's the killer's phase. The killer will now like do one attack. So that means one of these victims now dies. Oops. And you put like dead victims here. And also we increase the blood level by um, uh, the the um, the blood loss marker by one. You can see here that the killer actually does um, like two damage with one attack, but um, and the and the victims only have one health, but still only one of them dies because the killer did only one attack and that leftover damage is just lost. That damage is important for us because we can lose more. We have more than one health, right? So that is important to note. All right, that was the killer phase almost. Now we still have that terror card here. Let's see. You can't save us. No one can. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, all victims in your space must panic twice. Okay. <laughs> so there's one in my space that I wanted to save. So let's um, do the panic roll. That means we just roll the die. We see the number two and two goes into that direction. Actually, that is good. No. No, wait, no, it goes in that direction. To the cabinets, and then they will panic again. 
with a three, um, they will then go up here. That is not too great, but okay. I guess that's the way it is. And then um, that was, and then the killer will again attack. So this one is gone as well. Bloodless meter rises, and um, then he will move. Do one movement action. As we can see, he can move one. So we'll move one into that space here. Okay. Now we do the panic phase because the killer phase is done. Panic phase means that um, that um, the if somebody was killed this round, which is the case, and um, victims are on the, on the killer space, we will now do the panic phase. So they will all panic. Let's please one panic into my direction. That would be awesome. Three, um, one panics down here. The other one with the five, also, no, actually panics to that to that direction and the last one also down here oh man this is looking really bad by the way really bad all right and then upkeep phase nothing going on there all right we have the new action phase oh man oh man so um yeah we can't really do a whole lot we can walk do I want to walk away from the killer or do I want to try to save someone here? I don't know because next round, I don't know what will happen, but next round um, the killer might move again and also attack. We don't know that yet, right? So um, that is not too good. I think I need to get to safety somehow for now. I think that's what I will have to do. So I will definitely walk. Um, we can use two dice for that. We have one success, okay. I could not use this to reroll a die, but one success means moving one space, that is fine. Let me just move one away here for now. Um, and then uh, we lose one time, and that's all we can do because we don't have any cards anymore, right? So I will go right to the planning phase and purchase action cards. Let me get all of those back into my hand. Um, and also um, we can have spent five time Distraction is important. I want. I need more dice, so that costs me three, um, and also a sprint action, so we can actually save more victims soon. That's two, and that is all that we can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's fine. We are not over our hand limit yet, and soon we will start to use these things here, right? Because I might have to start attacking the killer quite soon. I don't know. I will go around here and try to save those if possible. Mm, and if not possible, then well, then it's the way it is. Okay, that was the planning phase. Um, reset time to six and put that one here. All right, then we have the killer phase. So um, the killer will attack here, but there's no one there. Let's reveal a terror card. So horror meter is increased, which is bad. And the killer will now move one and then attack. The best way to go would be here. And then the killer will attack one of those and the bloodless meter will also um, rise. Okay, that's pretty bad. All right, then uh, we have the panic phase. So this one will panic here, of course. So let's see what will happen. Two uh, panic into over there, okay. And then we have the upkeep phase, nothing to do there. Okay, so let's see. Um, what do we want to do? I definitely want to do that distraction thing again because uh, we need to keep that horror meter down. That is really important. So let me do that first. So please two successes for once. One success and we can discard two cards. I will actually do that. I don't need a short rest for now. Well, I could also rest a bit, but no, I will not do that. And I will also not do the weak attack. So I will, I will discard these two. That means we have actually two successes. So we can lower that by two and we gain two more time. That is nice. That is amazing. Okay, that's really good. And um, actually, what I could have also done is instead of discarding these two, I could have used that to re-roll, right? Because then I would still have these two cards here. No, 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 no. I'll spend those. That's fine. Okay, and then um, 
So now we have a lot of time on our hands. So I could start um, moving a little bit. Let, let me move into that direction. So let's sprint. Oh, two successes. Perfect. That means we lose one time, but we can move up to three spaces. So one, two, three, like this. I've taken one victim with, with me. Wonderful. Down here, I can put them all. Maybe I'm, I'll be able to save them all here. That is not enough. I need to save six for that card to turn over, but it is fine. It is okay, actually. Okay, um, so that went well. Let's do another sprint, maybe. Oh, I don't have one, but let's do a walk then. So two successes would be great again. One success, we could uh, we could get rid of two cards, which I don't want. I will use the close call and hope that I can get a success here. No, I can't. All right, then we will only move one space, but I will take a victim with me. Okay, that's fine. And we lose one time. Okay, not too bad. Um, we still have six time. We still have a lot of time. So let's do a focus action and see what happens there. One success. Okay. So we can decrease that and decrease that. Um, yeah, we can't do a whole lot soon, but I need to go all out. So let's do another focus. That is two successes. Nice. So we can decrease that. We're actually in the green area here and we gain even two time. That is amazing. I don't have any cards anymore. <laughs> so I'm all out of cards, but um, I can now get to, uh, I can get a lot of cards here because we have seven time, which is a lot. So let's um, do the planning phase now. Um, distraction is, uh, is good to have. And um, what do I want? I want a sprint action for sure. Then I want to walk. That is free and we still have five so we could start with these here um until this action phase ends all threes and fours are successes that is not that interesting um so that's something like i should make maybe start investing in in reaction cards you know like retaliate means that we can ignore all damage or reduce the damage and then um, attack back right and we do have like that plus one attack here so I might get the retaliate or we could get the guard, right? We could get a few guard cards, but actually, no, I, I want to like reduce the health immediately. So I will get a retaliate card for four and then we have one left and I will get a close call with that. So we, we will just save, um, we will just continue saving these and just uh, hope that, yeah, that the killer doesn't attack us. And if he does, we have that retaliated thing. So that is pretty good. Okay, reduce that by one, and then we are done. So we increase that by to six again, and we will get rid of all these cards. These are free. This one is here. Free here. Free, free, and there. Okay, then with the killer phase, the killer will now attack, but no one is there. Let's um, take the horror card here. Taking souvenirs. Um, is that is that a wrong spelling? I'm not sure. If there are no victims on the board, uh, there are. Otherwise, um, okay. So um, move in the direction of a victim. Move up to two. Well, he can only he only needs to move one, so that's fine. And then he will do two attacks. Okay. And then um, that will increase that meter here and also for each victim killed during the killer phase plus one bloodlust oh man now he's becoming more dangerous because now he will actually walk two per shoe here that is pretty bad so panic phase nothing happens because no one is on his space okay well the killer is actually is doing a lot of work here all right upkeep phase nothing is happening all right so it's our phase again um i will definitely walk um, and hope that we get at least one success. Yeah, we do. One success, that's fine. So we can walk one. So I will move up to one space, bring that victim there and reduce time by one. So, and because we are in that space here, that one can be saved, which I will do. So there are several things we can do. Either we can get more time, we can heal up, we can move one space, 
Uh, we can also take an action card, which is pretty nice. Um, that has maximum two time cost. Not too bad, all of that. But um, actually, we will not do that much this round. So I think I don't need time, but I think I will just decrease the Toro meter by one again. I think that's not too bad. So now we are in a really good spot here at least. All right, and then I will sprint, move up to two, th th three spaces. So we could actually, like, just with one success, we can save another victim. So let's try that. Oh, no. Uh, I could get rid of these two cards, right? Um, in order to have at least one success. Would I do that? Uh, yeah, I would do that. I will... No, actually, no, no. We can also place... I don't know, we could also play that close call card, but mm, I don't know what I will do, actually. No, I, you know what, I will just discard these two, so we can move up to two spaces, so move one, up one and move one back down with that victim, then we can save that one, we lose one time, and then I will put that on... Um, actually, I will put it on that move one space action, so we can save even, I will move back so we can save even more victims, maybe. Okay, good. Uh, that's it. We don't have any cards anymore. So um, let's just start planning. We have four time, which is not a lot. But the killer is very far away, but he can move up to four theoretically. He will not be able to go to our space next round, I think. But you never know. Um, I will definitely get like all these zero cards into my hand again. There is a walk action there. That is good. We also have a weak attack. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then we have four times. So let me um, get a sprint one. That costs two. And also a guard card. So in case he attacks us, we can actually guard against that. Okay, that's it. So we don't have any time left. So up to six and get these back to where they belong like that okay um so now it's the killer phase um the killer will attack no one there terror card let's see oh okay the horror meter is increased by two and he will walk into the direction of either victim or final girl um one two three four one two three four yeah the worst thing would be to actually move there now it's gonna get tough oh no okay so good that we have that guard card um for later on okay panic phase no panic phase because no one was killed um and upkeep phase also nothing for now okay so it's our turn again so let's see what we will do um let's see but before that uh let me just uh drink a bit of tea here and then I will have to see how we continue. Well, we'll see about that. All right, so let's see. Um, so, uh, well, we have a weak attack, right? But that doesn't do a whole lot. No, I think I will not do that. I think what I will do is, hmm, we can only take one victim with us. So I could actually sprint here and get a victim, right? And then get that one as well. We have a sprint and a walk action. We could do that. But if that does not work, then we have an issue because now we can only roll with two dice instead of three, right? Um, but that would be a possibility. Because the cool thing is we can actually move onto the killer space and then back without the killer doing anything, right? Because Thematically, the killer has just not seen us. You know what? Let's do a sprint action and see what happens. If we can actually get two successes, that would be amazing. Let's just see. We have a success and we also have um, like an almost success. I don't need the short rest for now. Um, and I can get rid of one focus. So let's do that. Let's get rid of the focus and the short rest. And then we can, um, we lose one time, but we can move up to three spaces. So I will move one up, then one back down. Oops, no, not that one. And then one further to save that one here. 
So, and you know what? With that one, I will just... Well, I could also take an action card. But there is none that let us do, like, uh, damage. So, um, you know what? I will just heal back one of my hearts. So I'm back at full health again. So, that was that. Um, oh, I shouldn't have put those there. I have to put them here first. Okay, and then I will walk. If you get two successes, I can actually also save that one. Let's see. Maybe we are lucky. I don't know. Maybe we are lucky. We are! Two successes. Perfect. We lose one time, but we move up to two spaces. So move one up, move one down. So that one is also saved. So, and now, and then let me uh, get more time, actually. Um like this wonderful so and i will not um, use any of these i will just go to the planning phase now i have six times so i will take retaliate i could also take furious strike but i'm pretty sure that the killer will get come to my come to my space pretty soon well actually we can also guard right so let me take furious strike because we will have to probably confront the killer soon because there are almost no victims here anymore. So that is four time. And now I'm thinking we could do the sprint action to go places, right? I could also just use the close call ones just to reroll dice. Um, but if the killer does not go to our space, then we want to walk, right? And we only have that one walk action. Uh, I think I will take a sprint action, actually. I think so, yeah. And also that walk one because that is free. Okay, I think I will do it like this. And then we go back up to six. And then these are almost all free. And this one here. All right, now we have the killer phase. So the killer will attack that uh, that victim here. Oh man, blood loss is pretty high. And then terror card, let's see. Let's go see if the rumors are true. Place two new victims in the space where the killer started the game. And you can see that up here, right? So that is actually not too bad because we will have two new victims here um, that we will put right here. Like this, right? Yeah. Okay, and then increase the horror meter here. And also event cards. So now we can actually take more with us. Oh, we could maybe save these two. That would be amazing. Vengeance. I don't know why I pissed it off and I don't care. Just save me. The victim farthest, farthest from the killer is now the damned. Re whenever the killer must choose a car target, the damned is chosen instead. The damned can only be saved if it is the last victim alive. If the damned dies, plus two bloodlust. Huh. Okay, interesting. So let's see, do we have like a token for that? I don't think so, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. Let me just put the skull here so we know that's the damned one. Um, that just helps me kind of um, track that. Also, I need to place them like apart from each other because the other event still, there's an ongoing effect that is, um, well, that is still uh, valid there. So, okay, that was that was the killer phase. Somebody was killed, but there's nobody to panic, so that's fine. Upkeep phase is fine as well. Okay, mm, I will now first do a sprint action. Um, I can roll two dice. We have, oh, we don't have any successes. One success would be enough for me. So, let, can I? Oh, I don't really wanna. Mm, I don't really want to get rid of anything, but I could get rid of focus and the weak attack. That would be okay. And then I can move up to two spaces at least, losing one time. So move one, move two. So that one is saved. Um, more time or take an action card? Uh, I think I want two more time instead. So I'm up to seven. And then I will play the walk card and hope that I will get two successes. 
No, only one success, but that's okay. I will just walk one there. I think that's fine. Because if the killer actually goes there, then I can also like like hit him and stuff. Okay. Um, so that was one success. We move one space and we lose one time. Okay, that works. Now we go to the planning phase. We have six. I won't retaliate for sure. So I have two left. And then I want to take all these free ones, of course. So I'm at six. That's fine. Actually, we could also do the critical blow, right? Um, no, that's fine. Retali uh, no, that's fine. That is fine. And then I have two left. You know what? Let me take these two close call ones here. Um, and then we go back up to six. And these are put back to where they belong. Uh, sprint over here and these over there. Okay. Uh, next round. So, uh, no, next, next round. I mean, the killer phase. Killer will stab here, but no one there. So let's take over the next. Let's take the next card. That girl. What's her name? She can help us. Place two new victims in the space where you started the game. Okay, we have even more victims now. We only need to save one for our for our uh, card to activate, right? We started the game over here in the make out point. Well, I know what these two are doing. Um, and then increase the horror meter. Okay, we need to be careful of that. And then we have a new event card. Girlfriend. Ah, I know that one, yeah. She's cute, funny, and the biggest badass I've ever known. The victim closest to you is now your girlfriend. That's her. She will follow you into the killer space. While she's in your space, roll plus one die for each horror roll. If the girlfriend dies while in your space, we increase that by five. So we definitely need to save her. Okay. So that is now our girlfriend. Let's just, I don't know, put, well, I, we can remember that, but let's just put this, these firework, this firework token there. Okay. So that was the uh, killer's phase. We have no panic phase, no upkeep phase. So it's our turn again. Well, definitely walk. Let me definitely walk up to two spaces. No, one space is enough. Just one success. Come on. Not one success. Is there anything we can... No, I don't want to get rid of anything. Let's use that close call thing and we roll one die. There we go. We have one success. We can walk. We lose one time. We can walk one so we can save. We can save her. Oh, we could have... Wait, wait, wait. We could have rolled one more die, right? Let's imagine this is the third die we rolled. Ah, okay, that would have, would have not, not have been a success, so that's fine. And then we can save our girlfriend. That is wonderful. So put it on the last space here. We can now take an action card that costs up to two. Um, sprint search. We could actually start searching for more stuff, right? What's at the dog? A trash can lid. Uh, that doesn't really help us. Hmm search i don't know sprint would be good i think no actually you know what let's take that search card let's see that's fine so and now we covered all of these on the card there and that is amazing because now we can turn over that card here and now we have our ultimate ability unlocked Whenever you are in the same space as an enemy and inflict damage, do an additional damage. And we also get an additional one for the aluminum bat. And for each additional victim saved, we just gain one time instead. Right? So that is pretty good here. Okay. Nice. Um, we still have stuff to do. You know what? I could... Ah, I don't have a move card, so I can't, I can't move. I can't do anything. We can't... We could... I could focus. And then hope that the killer will come to our spot. Um, yeah, let's focus. Let's see what happens there. So we can roll two dice. We get one success. That means we can put that one back. We lose one time. That's fine. And that's all I will do for now. Um, because I think it's time to face the killer. So planning phase. We have four. Uh, these are two... These are too pricey here. Um, I will definitely take these free ones. Three. Then we have three, six, nine. 
Well, I don't know if I will take all of these. Give me a second. I will definitely take a weak attack. Um, and I will definitely take... Um, so we have four. What do we do with these four? Planning, search, sprint. Actually, there's nothing I want to do with these four, right? Um, let us take a sprint. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, let us take a sprint one for two and also a search card for two just in case we... Actually, no. Let me put that back. Let me do it differently. Let me take a distraction card for three. Then we have one time time left. Oh, we can't do anything with that. But we now have eight cards, so we can take both free cards into our hands as well. I think that's the best thing to do at the moment. Then go back to six and put all these cards back. The close call and these two free ones. Okay, then we have the killer face. The killer will attack here. Nothing happens. And then, oh, we are almost through the terror deck. Place Hans with the farthest target possible. Oh, that is that one here. And then we increase that by one. And we draw the next terror card. Ooh. Um, ah, he will actually move towards the final girl, theoretically, but... Oh, that one needs to be discarded. But um, this vengeance one says that um, the killer choose, um, chooses this target instead. So he will just stay there and kill kill that one and because that one is um, the damned according to the event card we raise that by one for the regular one here and also by two because the damned one oh man now it's gonna be tough wow okay so that is really tough now because um panic phase nothing happens of course but we now have the upkeep phase so we now Oh, we should have revealed the dark power here, by the way. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, for everything, Hans, for every attack, Hans attacks you and each victim in this space once. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's fine. That wouldn't have happened here anyway. And then we reveal this one now. Dark, darker, darkest. Draw a second dark power card when this is revealed. Oh, wow. I haven't had that card yet, but I guess these are the dark powers. We just have to draw a second one. So let's draw this one here. Oh, there's an epic dark power. For every victim that Hans kills, plus one bloodlust. Okay, let me just put that here, like this. Well, then we don't see his face. Oh, we don't see his face anymore anyway. Okay, wow, that is not good. <laughs> that is definitely not good. Um, wow. By the way, I made a pretty big mistake, right? Every time we should have been like one of these spaces, we should have increased our horror level, right? So I would have to do that retroactively. Um, it is kind of bad because I would have then done different things, right? If I had known that. But let me just put it to maximum here and I will have to decrease it now, right? When it's my turn. So yeah, that was pretty bad. Okay, so um, that was the upkeep phase. Now it's my turn again. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, well, then let's uh, decrease that power level again. Uh, that that um, horror level. We can only do that with focus, so let's try that. Uh, we can only roll one die now. Well, that's pretty bad. But we do have a success. That is good. So we put that one down and uh, lose one time. So I think now I need to hunt the killer, right? That's something that I now need to do. Um... Let's do the distraction thing first. Let's try to gain some time back. Yeah, we gain one time. We can decrease that by one and gain one time. That is fine. And now, will I go to the killer? Um, because now the killer will always go to... He will come to me. He will definitely come to me next round. Then I will not go to the killer. Instead, two, four, six, eight. Instead, I will just leave it like this. I will do nothing. Um, I will go to the planning phase because I have six time, which I will spend to get that critical blow here. Okay, and these go back to where they belong, like that. Okay, now it's the, uh, the killer phase. Oh, let me put that to six again. It's the killer phase again now, so um, we don't draw a new card, right? We always do what is written there, right? 
and Hans will actually go all the way here and then strike us. Okay, well, um, we have the reaction cards. Let me do, let me use retaliate. I can use retaliate now to try to ignore all his attack and do two extra. Oh no, that was a bad roll. Uh, let me, let me do the close call thing. I hope I can use that. I have play after any horror roll. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I will actually spend two time to reroll both dice. Okay, we have one success at least. So reduce the attack by two. He does uh, four attacks, so we lose two health. And we do one damage back plus that one plus that one. So we do three damage to Hans. Okay. Good. All right. Wow. Um, then we do the panic phase. Nothing. Nothing happens there. Um, and then the upkeep phase. Also nothing. Okay. Oh, these two, by the way, I just leave there. Okay. Then it's my turn. Um, I have four time left. The critical blow would be one thing. We also have a weak attack. Guard and furious strike. Uh, we need like two successes, right? But um, let us do the weak attack first. So let's do the weak attack first. Oh, no success. Uh, but I will have to discard something. Otherwise, our action is over anyway. So let me discard search. And also let me discard walk. So then we can turn one of them into a uh, this one into a success, um, which means that we do one we lose one health, but we also do one damage plus one plus one, so we do uh, three damage to him. Okay. Oh man, this does not look that great. Okay. So and then let's do let's do the critical blow, the furious strike. With the critical blow, we would be able to almost kill him, but let's do the furious strike first. Let's do that. Let's hope for at least one success, at best two. Oh, no success. And I really don't want to discard my cards. Well, mm, no, then I will, I will just take it the way it is. I will lose one health, almost, oh, we almost did. And go up here one and our phase is also over. Man, that did not look good. We have four... Oh, this one goes there. We have four on um, time. Um, let's do the distraction. Let's take the distraction one for three. Let's also take the close call one for one. And let's take the free ones. Three, five, eight. That's fine. All right, and then we go back to six and we uh, put those there again. So Furious Strike was here. Um, search, retaliate, close call. Okay, that was not that great. Okay, now it's the killer's phase again. The killer will um, walk to us and do an attack. The attack does four damage, but I do have the guard here. Let's hope for two successes, please. Oh no. All right, same thing. I will spend two time to re-roll to re both. Come on, come on. One success. One success means that um, guard, let's see, that we reduce the damage by two. That means we still receive two damage. So one damage here. And now we have like um, the specific uh, function of these tokens, because if we turn it over, there could be even more hearts or we could be dead. And there's nothing. So yeah, we are dead. Ah, that, that went really bad at the end. Could we have done anything? You know what? I just needed one more round and then I probably would have killed him because uh, we have the critical blow that can do up to five damage. And, oh, no, that's it. Yeah, okay, and then I would have, 
had to run away because we don't have any attacks anymore. Okay, these last few rolls went really bad, yeah. That was tough, man. That was really tough, but yeah. Let's just see if we would have killed him. Ah, he would have gotten another heart. So we would have needed not six, but even seven damage to make. Because um, you see, these all have different like things on the back. Um, this one is empty here. Would be three hearts, for example. Last time I played, Hans actually got three hearts. And these are all empty. So it seems like there's only, is there only one with a heart? No, there's one with two, one with one, and one with three hearts out of eight tokens. Nine tokens. No, eight tokens, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's like almost 50% chance um, that one of us will at least get one heart. And, well, he did. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, that was my playthrough of Final Girl. Unfortunately, I did not win. It looked kind of good in between, but then at the end, the roads all didn't work anymore. Um, so, yeah, some of all the roads didn't work anymore. We were a little bit unlucky. I probably didn't also play perfectly, right? Like, time is a really precious resource, not only in real life, but also in this game. So, maybe my hand management wasn't that great here. So, um, yeah, to just wrap up the video, let me just uh, give you my thoughts on the game. Not a full fledged review, just rambling a little bit about what I think about it. So, um, so this is a good game. Um, the game works pretty well. It has some interesting mechanisms. It is pretty much simply a hand management game. That is like the main thing um, the, the game is doing here. And there's like a lot of stuff you have to keep track of, um, which is why I forgot a few things, um, but that max, max makes the game even better that you have like a lot of things to manage. Um, so it, it is a good game um, and also the theme is done really well. So the theme is implemented really well here. Um, I was really surprised at how well um, you really feel like you're trying to, you're running from the killer, you're trying to save victims. Um, you're really trying to do that. So um, that theme really, really works. And it's really thematic also here with like sprint, like sprinting costs time. Um, also, like if you just walk, it costs time, right? But just with sprinting, like in that time, you can just go farther, right? So that works pretty well. Um, also these things like um, like distraction, like decreasing the horror meter, focusing as well, because you're not as horrified because you are focusing. So there are like a lot of things that really make a lot of sense here um, thematically. Um, so I, I like that a lot. That works really well. Also the components are just great. The cards are okay. Um, if you played this game a lot, I would probably um, sleeve those. Um, but apart from that, um, components are great, wonderful. Like all these little meeples here and the time token and really cool, really well done. All the rules are written well. Um, still, I gotta say, maybe maybe that's because like my expectations were like really high because like I have the feeling like everybody is saying that this is the best solo game ever. Like, ev like every other person is saying that, I have the feeling. And it is a good game, but somehow, I don't know, I think I play this another maybe two, three, four times uh, when I figure out like a strategy, then of course, I mean, we do have some variation here regarding the events and stuff, but like in general, we are playing pretty much like a very similar game every time, right? Like the, I think that the um, the variety um, stems from having like different feature film boxes, but that becomes really pricey at some point. I think I pay, paid like 40, 45 euros for these two boxes. Yeah, of course, the, the components are nice, but still, I think that's quite a lot for such a rather small game, actually, right? Um, and if I now need another feature film box and another one, then that really racks up. So I don't know. So this is a good game. I enjoy playing it, but I don't really see myself playing this like over, like every time over other games, right? I think I will play it a few more times, but I don't think that I will get um, more feature film boxes. Um, I also don't think that I will play this like three years in the future. I don't think so. So um, it was a nice experience. It is cool. I will play it a few more times, but I think then um, the game would only last longer in my collection if I actually like got more of these feature film boxes to combine these stuff. And I don't think I want to do that. Um, I have only played with Laurie so far. And there's also like uh, Nico, no, what is she called? Like that other that other gal. Um, I always play, play with her as well, just to see how she plays. But that's pretty much it because there is much more variation. 
like the dark powers, the events, and here the horror deck, because there are even more horror cards, uh, terror cards, I mean, here, you see? So, um, yeah, there's a little bit of variation there, but yeah, but still, I don't know. It's not like, um, it's like the, the game with the most variety if you just have that bot box but that is that is what the game is about it's about that modularity and it's about like combining all these different boxes together right and i don't think i want to invest that much into it but um i don't want to sound too negative because this is a really good game the theme is implemented really really well and i can understand why people like it maybe another reason why i'm not the biggest fan of the game apart from having like way too high expectations at the beginning is also the theme it's not it's not my theme the theme is done well but i'm not a horror guy and it's just not my theme right if we had like another theme here it would be kind of hard to put another theme on here because it is just that integrated that well but another theme might have done a bit more for me maybe i don't know but it's a the game is well done if you like what you see here i mean it makes sense to hunt down a copy maybe just be aware of the fact that you might have to invest quite a bit of money into this if you actually want to play this like for a longer time or more often right that's one thing you should keep in mind so that was my playthrough of final girl with camp happy trails I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, as usual, I want to thank all of you for your support, especially my patrons who are generously supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much for that. The biggest shout-out goes to Thakano, who is currently my biggest supporter. Thank you so much for that as well. If you would also like to support me, why don't you head over to my Patreon and check out the tiers I have come up with. You will find the link in this video's description. But you don't have to. I'm also happy for any other support, such as liking, commenting, maybe even subscribing. That really helps my channel grow. So, um, yeah, I'm really thankful for that. Also, I would love to see you on the Discord server because there we can talk about everything regarding board games and even more. I'd love to welcome you over there. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the very next video. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and cheers.